How's she going there? How's she going there? A little teenage voice going. Hey folks, a uh, lot going on right now and kind of hunkered down here and uh, got to thinking maybe I should uh, read a little something. Put it up here, see if you're interested uh, as a diversion. I talked to my daughter who's more hip to these sort of things and she says I need to set up a little better situation than I got going right here but this is what I got right now uh, unflattering lighting got the schnook store sign in the background there um, yeah my saggy eye you know the one in lazy eye and uh, can't remember which one it is right now anyways I thought you know what tonight I will read you a little short piece from a book called from the top Is a collection of short pieces that I wrote originally as Roughneck Grace columns or else a little intermission monologues for Tent Show Radio. Some fellow read this book one time and said that it would make a great bathroom book. Who am I to disagree? Let's slap on the cheaters. This is a little piece from back when I used to raise pigs. It's been a while. Because I have written about pigs and posed for pictures while holding chickens, I am often introduced as a farmer. Out of respect to the farmers who raise me and those still struggling to pay the banker, that's only gotten worse, let me say that calling me a farmer is like calling a guy who hits himself in the head with a hammer a brain surgeon. We do have a bunch of chickens, and I have been in the hog business for a few years now, or was at that time. First year, I had two pigs. Second year... I doubled the size of the operation. Got four. Economy of scale. That's where your profit lies. I shall never forget the day I got my first pair of feeder pigs. While the farmer and I were lifting the first one into the pickup. What do you mean low battery? <laughs> Folks, I'm just sitting up here in the little room over the garage. It's the end of the day. It's been a long day. It ain't all over yet. And I'm sure you maybe feel the same, but just uh, just reading this thing into my phone. Where was I? I shall never forget the day I got my first pair of feeder pigs. While the farmer and I were lifting the first one into the pickup, I detected a profound pain in my left rear buttock. Upon closer examination, I discovered that the farmer's gigantic coon dog no doubt assuming I was stealing the pigs, had gone stark raven bonkers and was actively masticating a double whopper's worth of my backside. I'll say this for that dog. He was profoundly dedicated to his task. By the time he turned me loose, I felt like my backside had been run through a laundry mangler. Later, when I got home, I went into the bathroom and dropped my drawers to view the damage in the mirror, and what I saw on my hinder was a hematoma the size of a personal pan pizza, framed by four angry red fang marks. First thing I thought was, man, I gotta show somebody. I hollered for my wife and told her to bring the camera. You get festooned up with an injury... Injury. You get festooned up with an injury. There's no do-overs on this. This is a one-off phone recording, folks. You get festooned up with an injury of this caliber. You want some documentation for the grandkids. It hurt to sit and it hurt to walk, but I wanted to get those pigs turned out before the rabies hit. So I backed the pickup over to the paddock I'd set up and turned them loose. I took them out of the back of the pickup, and it was really neat to see them hit the dirt. They started snuffling and snorting and rolling around. My daughter Amy, seven at the time, 20 years old and six foot tall at the moment. My daughter Amy, seven at the time, was watching them, and, and then all of a sudden she said, Oh, Daddy, they're so cute. I'm calling that one Wilbur and that one Cocklebur. I said, Well, honey, that's okay, but you have to understand that in October, you have to understand. I, listen, I talk like a farmer, but not that much of a farmer. I said, well, honey, that's okay, but you have to understand that in October, we're going to turn the pigs into food. I wasn't sure if she really got it. But a few weeks later, we had some cousins visit from the city. Amy took them down to see the pigs while I fetched a slop bucket. So I got there a little late. Just as I walked up, she was pointing at the pigs. That one over there is Wilbur, and that one's Cockleburr, she said. But in October, 
That one's ham and that one's bacon. These days, most of the food in our freezer and the eggs in our skillet do come from our own little farm. But nope, I'm not really a farmer. I'm a self-employed storyteller with part-time pigs. And if I get home tomorrow and find out they've all croaked, well, it's not the end of my career. It's just one bad weekend and one more story to tell. Yeah, man, that's from, uh, from the top. Wrote that a while back. It was published by Wisconsin Historical Society Press on paper, made in Wisconsin. That did my heart good. Hey, folks, this is just a just me saying uh, swingbysneezingcow.com if you get a chance. And most of all, take care of yourself and your loved ones. We'll uh, see you down the road, or as they say where I'm from, well, I suppose. <laughs>